Hello, this is Marco Volk from www.houseinvestigations.com. Big brown bats with silky brown fur are flying warm-blooded nocturnal mammals. Their dark brown stretchy skin wings are also arms with a big thumb used for crawling and roosting. The female 5 inch long 13 inch wingspan, not to be confused with the slightly smaller small brown bats, have been known to live up to 20 plus years. The males and baby pups have a slightly smaller 12 inch wingspan. These 32 sharp teeth insectivores can catch up to 1,000 insects equal to their body weight each night using echolocation, high pitch sounds that bounce off their mosquito dinner back into their oversized ears. During the day, they rest in roosting sites located higher and hotter 90 degree plus elevation areas such as barn roofs, roof vents, chimneys, and attics. Bats also have a plan B, which may consist of several other different roosting sites in case they have an emergency, like in my case, which occurred in August of 2009 when I used a hose to wash spider webs for my cottage exterior fireplace brick. The 150 bats behind my chimney did not like the high-pitched laminar water flow from the hose, nor did they like the shower. They all flew out instantly and moved somewhere else. I know they did not come back because the next morning I used a thermal camera in my hot attic looking for their body heat images. Additionally, that evening was the first evening that we were eaten alive by biting mosquitoes. I may never find my bats since they can travel many miles per night. Many bats will travel up to 300 miles during the fall when they return to their cool hibernation caves where they pick one mate and hibernate. In the spring, the bats usually return to their same roosting sites. The females go to the nursery roosts, which can consist of hundreds of bats, and give birth to only one or two pups and spend June and July milking. The males go to smaller bachelor roosts where they hang out for the summer. Many times, large bat roosts create a nuisance for house occupants. Bats can be loud with their communicating squeaky noises. Additionally, large swarms of bats fly in and out of their roosts just before and after dusk. Finally, there are odor problems from their urine and bat guano, and in a few cases with very large colonies cause full ceiling collapses. This foul odor guano also grows fungal spores that people may breathe, potentially leading to histoplasmosis, a respiratory problem with fever, chest pains, and coughing. Along with fungal spores come bat mites, which are similar to bed bugs. The problem occurs when these bat mites fall through the ceiling cracks or when people clean bat guano. These small mites can suck your blood while you are sleeping. People think they can simply kill bats by sealing up the house dark stained roost entrances. Bats only need 3 8 of an inch entrance to get to their roost. Some people even try to disguise themselves thinking they can trick the bats and use fishing nets to catch them. <laughs> You cannot seal up these holes during the spring and summer. If it is a maternity roost, 30% of the mother bats and all 100% of the baby pups will still be in the roost, and after you seal up the holes, they will find a way out, which is usually the inside of your home. Additionally, most of the pups will die and decay in your walls. Many bat species are endangered or at least protected, so you cannot kill them. A more common eviction process is called exclusion. Unfortunately, you have to wait until mid-August or after all the pups can fly. You can also wait until November 15th when most of the bats leave to hibernate to their cave roosts. Make sure that the bats have left for the winter or you will be trapping them in your home.
your trained professional can put up a bat screen attaching above and over the roost entrance and extending it unattached 12 inches or so below the entrance. This permits the bats to leave the roost but not come back. Bats will always land and plant their feet in the exact same location when coming back to their roost, so the screen keeps them from coming back. They are not smart enough to climb under the screen. This is where they leave and move to your neighbor's attic. When the bats are gone, you can fill these small 3 8 inch or greater size holes with caulk or fiberglass. Bats hate fiberglass insulation. If you are not sure you sealed up all the holes, sometimes you could run fans and leave the lights on in the attic all spring. After all these efforts, you will still need to clean up the bat guano and the bat mites. If you see bats during the day or on the ground, they may be sick or rabid. Although less than 5% of bats carry rabies, it is very rare to be bit by a rabid bat. Additionally, bats do not naturally fly into people's hair. Protecting bats is crucial because it's a very important part of our food chain. Without bats, the insect population would run rampant. Thank you. This is Marco Voke from www.houseinvestigations.com.